Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another special edition of the show. So I've got VJ Reddy here of Reddy Vineyards. Uh, Neil uh, Newsom, I have to thank him for uh, connecting me with VJ here. Uh, he's another icon of the industry, another pioneer of, of uh, grape growing here. And uh, VJ's got an awesome, interesting story. So uh, VJ, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and kind of tell us how you got into all this. And uh, you don't have to worry about looking there. Okay. Uh, you can either look there look, or, yeah. or here because okay. it's more of a conversation. Okay. I should have told you that off camera before we started that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, Mark... Uh, <clears throat> We started like 22 years ago, okay. uh, planting grapes. That too, due to Neil Newsom. Yeah, uh, he's a good friend of ours, a family friend, and he was growing grapes even 10 years before we started our grapes. Mm -hmm. And one day, uh, he told us, "Hey, VJ, I'm bringing the grape perule samples to you, and then you have uh, quite a bit of land. Why don't you start?" some grape growing. And then uh, l later that year, I met with uh, his dad and then talked to some local uh, couple of grape growers, Bobby Yang. Mm -hmm. And that time uh, they said, oh, you can start small. And it, it wasn't like you can sell all the grapes if you go really big. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1997, we planted uh, five acres. Okay. Uh, that five acres, uh, after two years, uh, we gotten acquainted with uh, Dr. Becker, Becker Vineyards up in yes. Fredericksburg. Uh, he suggested uh, he will buy VNA from us. Mm -hmm. So we planted another five acres VNA. Yeah. And from that year onwards, uh, next 10 years, uh, we planted only like another 30 acres for the next 10 years. Okay. Because slowly, five acres here, five acres there. Yeah. And then uh, after uh, <clears throat> 1905, Close to that time, there are more wineries coming into Texas. Okay. Uh, then you know, we happened to meet some other winemakers in Texas, going to Twiga conferences. Yeah. And they requested, uh, "Can you plant, hey Alianico, or can you plant Montepulciano?" Uh, some winemaker wanted, uh, "I need a." Uh, 10 tons of Pinot Grigio, can you right. plant those? We have the land, you know, West Texas, we have plenty of land. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been a cotton farmer and uh, uh, agronomy consultant for mm -hmm. the last uh, 40 years, actually. Yeah. And then uh, we've been farming 2,000 acres, cotton, peanuts, and even you know, crops like uh, green beans and uh, uh, spinach. Yeah. And we thought, hey, let's try some you know, grapes. Uh, we tried all those varieties. Some may be strange, never heard of it, like Alianico. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a, uh, a French variety and uh, no more Italian. And, Italian, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, nobody w would understand where that came from or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that time, the Mandola winery was popping yes. up. Uh, now it's at um, Dr. Dukeman's Dukeman, uh, yeah. winery. They wanted a all that uh, Alianico and uh, Montepulciano from, right. from our vineyards. Uh, that's uh, one way we got started. And then uh, keep on adding with the different varieties. Mark, right now, uh, we are actually have uh, 32 different varieties. Okay. Uh, starting <laughs> from Alianico all the way to Zinfandel. A to Z, baby. <laughs> a, 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 a to Z. Z. Yeah. Uh, Ninety percent of my <coughs> grapes are harvested here and sent to actually the Fredericksburg 
hill country okay. near a place yeah uh, our grapes go to fredericksburg the houston mm-hmm. and uh, dallas area some and also uh, lubbock area too yeah. uh, i work with uh, 22 different uh, wineries yeah and, that's awesome uh, yeah so uh, approximately 800 to 1000 tons per year okay uh, this year you you see in uh, our vineyard yeah, we can see it mm-hmm. so where we're sitting we can see basically every yeah, every acre. every every acre from yes. here yeah yeah it's uh, looking really good mm mm-hmm. uh, we are really blessed with uh, mother nature uh, we've gone through a lot of uh, rain and hail just 10 miles from us mm-hmm. but we never hit uh, with the hail or anything and that's uh, that's that's really uh, helping us yeah right, so right now you have seen uh, all blooming is taking place right now uh, finishing up mm-hmm. you can see small clusters right? yeah. green and up uh, we are expecting variation probably um, within 2 uh, to 3 weeks okay. some of the early varieties yeah. like a sangiovese like okay uh, yeah like that yeah um neil said the same thing um that they avoided the hail but then when i was uh, at yano sicado yesterday uh Jason showed me that you know they they got hit with the hail over there in Lubbock. Yeah. Yeah, on on the vineyards that are on property there. And there's right. I mean, we were discussing this um guys you right before we came in here that you know coming out here this is the vast majority of the grapes are coming from this section of 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 Texas. Yeah. And that the vineyards you see in Fredericksburg at the wineries while they're they are legit vineyards they're there but that's not really the production they're really no. mostly for show but they still harvest them and they still they still use them but they're they're really there just so when somebody drives up to a winery they want to see a vineyard that's correct <laughs> you know that's correct we we kind of uh, uh, growing right now probably 80% of texas grapes in yeah. terry county yeah terry just county, county yeah. just right here in brownfield surrounding area mm-hmm. we call terry county now it's uh, they call it uh, uh capital for the grape yeah. industry uh we have like almost 3000 acres okay. the whole texas we may have like 4500 acres okay but 3000 acres in terry county, this county yeah the county and then that uh, translates to going all, growing all the grapes here and then going uh to the fredericksburg area yeah. all those 30 40 or even 300 wineries in texas mm-hmm. uh, the grapes are growing uh, grown here yeah. and then uh, shipped to that part of the country yeah. uh, we are lucky uh, because uh, summers can get hot uh, we can go up to 92 some days 95 few days up to 100 mm-hmm. but when sun goes down evening cools down yeah because it's a it's not like san antonio or austin we don't have that kind of humidity no uh, most of the time we may have to use maybe twice three times fungicides and other than that uh, normally we don't we don't yeah uh, use that aggressively like uh, hill country yeah uh, with that much rain you getting in the hill country they have to use the fungicides almost every week mm-hmm. and uh, and also they can get into trouble with uh, high rainfall and uh, fungal growth and all that right. but because of a dry nature of uh, uh, south plains all all the best uh, grapes are grown here yeah. yeah and i mean this is a semi arid climate like i i'm not used to being out here so like today i had to go get some carmex <laughs> i'm not i'm not it's not an ad for carmex it was just i really enjoy it matter of fact i'm going to use some right now <laughs> um dry so yeah. uh, so you studied agronomy mm-hmm. um and you came over here from india right that's correct uh, what 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 year was that in the 70s somewhere? 71 71 yeah Seven, 71 we came to kansas state and got my master's degree yeah and after that i applied for a phd in soil science mm-hmm. i went to fort collins mm-hmm. uh, colorado yeah and got got my phd 76 january and uh, how i ended up in lubbock that time my second brother was getting master's degree in industrial engineering in texas tech mm-hmm. we came to see him that time when i was in a finally in my graduation mm-hmm. uh, for my phd and i have seen the vast areas of uh, farmland the cotton the corn from plainview amarillo all this area yeah and i thought this is the place for my expertise and and i am a soil science major but also 
I have an uh, interest in a soil testing and plant analysis. Uh, that, uh, that was my major in my studies. Right. And I talked to some of the uh, big growers in this part of the country that time. That was in 1978. Right. And then uh, they offered me jobs, just consulting jobs, just like that, uh, without much effort. Mm -hmm. So we moved to 78 to Lubbock. And then we never left. Yeah, uh, it's been uh, 40 years in Lubbock, while consulting, running a soil testing lab, and gotten acquainted with a lot of farmers here. And we also farming up to uh, 2,400 acres. We still have it. Yeah. And out of where we are right now, uh, Mark, this is a half a section of the land. Uh, we have uh, 320 acres grapes, mm -hmm. like I mentioned to you, 32 yeah. different varieties. Yeah. And all goes to Fredericksburg area, most of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah some to uh, local here in right. Lubbock. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, I'm sure when you were talking to Neil, he probably mentioned uh, you know, weather-wise, it's not as uh, good as a MAPA. Right. Uh, California consistency-wise. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, because we can get into trouble with... Uh, Late freeze. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, we had a freeze May 14th. Yeah. Uh, that's late. <laughs> that's, that's late, late, late. Yeah. And uh, some years, we've gone through all the hail. Last couple of weeks, right. hail was uh, terribly done a damage to the Lubbock area, and north, and all that. Uh, but somehow, you know, luckily, we missed. And we didn't even get the rain also. Uh, that's okay, but we, didn't, we don't want that hail. Right. And uh, this part of the country, those are the most uh, uh, perils you, you have to right. face. Uh, otherwise, you can grow a lot of grapes here. Mm -hmm. But those, I, I, I already told you, uh, once we have like two good years, the third year could be really bad yeah. with the hail or a freeze damages. It's almost like the opposite of, I mean, I meant to say this when you said this to me earlier, it's almost like, like the opposite of classic Portugal and port where they only had like they had like one good vineyard out of like every three three years yeah, yeah and it's kind of the object you get like two two good every, ones you get about every three years you get you only have like one bad maybe only one bad one year. one bad and one uh, halfway uh, bad yeah then, then, then <laughs> it's a not good one, yeah. it's not completely totally yeah, right. lost <laughs> but when you get into halfway bad you're not going to make much money yeah yeah because a lot of expense involved in it mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing yeah, yeah so we were talking about when we were walking in the vineyards um and driving through it that um you're about 300 or so feet uh lower than uh out there in plains right. and that that translates into a little bit more a little warmer and i noticed that some of the berries look a little bit bigger even though it's been a couple of days for me they look a little bit bigger than neil's and you said that that's that that's because of the the climate over here. Climate just just enough elevation. Yeah, yeah. It's it's only thirty miles, and he's a three hundred uh, feet uh, higher elevation. Right. And that translates to maybe four or five days early bud break here. Okay. And that much early maturity here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, that that that. That, that's what you saw. Yeah. Uh, you said the, the Neil's berries were a little bit small. Yeah. Ours are a little bit bigger because of that uh, early bud break. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we saw that uh, actually right before we came here, we look at the Grenache and the Sangiovese, right? Yes. And uh, the Sangiovese ones, they were bigger, but we, there was a few that were a little small too. Small, yeah. yeah. Uh, was that because they were a little covered a little bit more with the canopy maybe? That, that's true. Okay. Yes. It, uh, all... And, uh, when, it, when it is uh, blossoming, all not going to be uh, make berries at the same time. Right, you, yeah. you will have a window of uh, one week. Okay. So that's what you are seeing. Some a little bit uh, bigger size, or some smaller size. Okay. But if you come back like a week from now, uh, you won't see that variation. Okay. Uh, we don't have much problem. Uh, all our berries uh, getting a variation. Uh, happening same time okay yeah we will uh, have a few clusters green clusters after variation is complete okay. if there are any green clusters so we knock them off okay we clip them out all right uh, kind of uh, cluster thinning okay and then after variation about how long does it take for you to get i mean i, I know every grape ripens a little bit differently but is there a kind of a range after variation uh, per, <clears throat> I guess, maybe grape variety that they come yes, right? Yes, yes. E each variety is different. Mm -hmm. The early ones on the reds, Sangiovese, mm -hmm. uh, they, they come uh, 
the first ones probably on, okay. the, on the reds. And after that, the Merlot will come. Okay. And then after, the cabs are the last ones. Yeah. And then we have a Alicante, Boucher, they're in the middle. Okay. Uh, like we have a Barbera, that's in the mid middle of it. Okay. So we probably start with uh, white varieties harvesting late July, okay. uh, first week of uh, August. Okay. All the whites will come early. Yeah. The Muscat's the f first. Okay. Uh, Muscat Blanc and yeah. uh, Pinot Grigio, mm -hmm. the early ones. Marsana is a little bit late. Okay. Rosana is a little bit late. They are pretty close to Sangiovese. Okay. And then after that, uh, the, the reds, the Merlot, the Tempranillo is, 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 is the first one too. Yeah. Yeah, the Sangiovese Tempranillo comes around the same time. And that mid, mid September. Okay. Uh, we finish harvest most of the all varieties by end of September. Okay. And may extend to first week of October. After that, everything is done. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Has that been, I, I meant to ask Neil this, because um, I usually ask this style of question. Mm -hmm. Has that been consistent? For the whole time, or have have were when you first were doing this, were your harvests shifted to be later, or has it been the weather and the climate here have been fairly consistent over the past like twenty something years? So, well, overall, eighty percent of the time is the consistent. Mm -hmm. The twenty percent one one year, or in fact, the last last year, uh, we had a terrible heat. Okay, early in the June, so that means you will have a one to two weeks early harvest. Okay. Yeah. All right. Other than that, uh, most of the time, it's just pretty uniform. Pretty uniform, The yeah. bud break also comes uh, every year starting like March 20th. Yeah. And it can go up, extend all the way to mid-April. Mid, uh, mid okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it did, I bring that subject a lot usually because, you know, in my travels, when we were telling you where I go, um, a lot of times they're a little more northern, a little more northern uh, latitudes. And they have seen, you know, over the past, say, maybe 20 years, uh, they've seen some some shifting uh, with earlier bud break and earlier flowering and earlier and earlier harvest um, by upwards of a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks uh, on average. And I didn't know how we were affected here. Really, anything's been noticeable. Here. Honestly, Mark, not that much here. Yeah. Not that okay. much. Yeah. All right. We are still not that far north and not that far south. I think the climate change, you know, that's what you, you're referring to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it has not terribly affected uh, shifting that much. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and actually, because I'm, because you are a soil scientist and a farmer, uh, and I was, um, uh, I meant like about a year or two ago, I was going to try to actually uh, interview uh, a, uh, a professor at actually A&M, mm -hmm. who um, is a, another similar, not exactly soil scientist, but he actually uh, kind of studies this on regular crops. I was going to talk to him about how that may be affecting okay. like worldwide regular crops. Uh, but we never got together. Uh, we never able to do it. But basically, you know, I know grapes, it's, it affects grapes, not all around the world, but it affects grapes, but I'm sure it affects other crops. Um, so uh, what else are we going to talk about? Um, oh, it's so uh, soil is fairly consistent throughout the whole area, right? It, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, yeah. Th these are all you can see. Uh, looking a little bit uh, reddish brown, mm -hmm. uh, the oxidized iron. Uh, we these are all sandy loam type toys. Mm -hmm. The top two to three feet is sandy loam, real yeah. mellow, easy. It's almost like a greenhouse soils. And then below three feet and below, you you will get into calcareous nature, mm -hmm. calcium, calcium carbonate sulfate yeah. like that, and very porous. The roots can go. Uh, Neil probably told you they can go up to twenty feet deep. Yeah. And uh, the big main tap root. Yeah. Uh, the most of the time, the top three feet, the roots will be absorbing their nutrients and moisture. Okay. Yeah. These these are so, these soils are very fertile, because these farmers have been uh, uh, growing crops like a cotton, peanuts, uh, wheat mm -hmm. on on these lands, like Terry County or uh, South Plains, for the last hundred years at least. Yeah. Uh, so they've been fertilizing, may not be heavily. But whatever the residual effect uh, is showing on a grapes also. That means all these soils in the South Plains or Terry County doesn't require a whole lot of fertilizer for grapes. Okay. Compared to cotton or peanuts. Right, yeah. So the minimum requirements. You can see everything is green. 
mm-hmm. uh, no deficiencies or anything. Yeah. And this this is the way you're going to see the whole summer long. Yeah. Uh, pretty pretty clean and uh, green and ni- nice nice looking. Uh, yeah. Grapes. Neil mentioned to me um, with with other crops that if you don't if you're not consistently fertilizing, you could lose your crop. Yes. Because even though like I said they've been fertilizing for a long time. Um, those those crops are pulling up all those nutrients, that, right? Yeah. So these, these you have to constantly put back into it. Whereas it's the grapes don't need the same nutrients, so they don't need as much. They they don't need that much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. exactly. Um, and and that's where, in, in some ways, from how I understand it, um, grapes have uh, some of an advantage in, in an environment like this. Plus, they don't need as much water, being being in a semi arid environment where you don't have a lot of rainfall that that's that's true uh, i know you irrigate and yeah we do yeah. we do have a drip system mm-hmm. we do irrigate supplement yeah when we need it but when when you get rains uh, consistently say every week an inch or two you don't even have to water yeah some years you can get by without a single drop of water using from okay. uh, your uh, drip system or bore wells yeah and some years like a drought uh, uh, years like last year uh, we have to struggle a little bit. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so while we're having lunch, and again, thank you for lunch. So yeah. This was awesome. Yeah. Um, we were, I was asking you a couple questions about, about grapes, and um, I asked you what your favorite grape or grapes are. <laughs> now, I had asked you, you know, about that, and first you said, well, these are the grapes I grow the most of because that's what people want. I yeah. said, okay. <laughs> but what, what if, if, you, if you could just grow whatever you wanted, okay. what, would, what would be those grapes and why? Okay, I, I told you, Mark, I have 32. Yeah, 32. You got to pick, so pick, pick, pick a favorite kid, right? Yeah, 32 baby, babies, right? Yeah. Which, which one are you going to pick? Yeah. That's a hard question. Uh, but we do have uh, the cabs, almost 30 acres, mm-hmm. a Merlot that much, and uh, Tempranillo yeah. that much. Uh, but the consistently, uh, the Italian variety, Montepulciano, mm-hmm. uh, I have uh, almost uh, oh, 30 acres also. Yeah. Uh, bud breaks a little later than uh, early varieties like Sangiovese and all that. Uh, that helps from the point of uh, fighting uh, late freeze. Okay. So that that I have been growing the multiple channels since almost last 15 years, mm-hmm. and uh, their production is consistently uniform every year. It doesn't matter when it uh, rain, rains or freezes or anything, early freezes. Mm-hmm. The late freeze is, um, yeah, yeah, can, can affect that, any, yeah. anybody. But uh, that one consistently a good production. Yeah. And it produces really good. Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. At least, uh, I mean. Uh, and you actually, have, and you have quite a few acres of that. So, I mean. Yeah. It's something that there is a demand for. Yes, it you is. Know, yeah. um, you know, you have a lot yeah, of, you, can, you have you a lot can, of wineries that. They like that. Yeah. And you can make a good uh, red wine mm-hmm. and you can do rosé with, yeah. with it. You can also blend. I mean, winemakers have a lot of options. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you've got another project that you're actually getting started this year, right? Your son's, your son's oh, yeah, heading yeah. that, spearheading that, right? That's right. It's like your project, but you're, you're, you're helping yeah, this, with it, right? Uh, vineyard is my project. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this uh, Oh, 22 years. Yeah. Well, started 22 years ago, uh, but my son is involved uh, almost 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, with uh, he has half of his uh, uh, wines are here also, mm-hmm. and he is funding and he is also supervising. And then uh, uh, we we took uh, I mean he took a winery permit two years ago, and uh, he is planning to have a ready wines uh, own own labels. Okay. Uh, coming this fall. Yeah. And so he's going to probably have uh, some Bordeaux blends and uh, some Italian, some Spanish blends. Okay. And then some Rhone whites. Rhone, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going to start. And that's his project. And then I can't tell you a whole lot until yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they come out and uh, they, they will release. Uh, it, it's coming to happen. And he told me, Dad, we're going to take or buy 100 tons from from my vineyard <laughs> to his project. Yeah. Uh, probably he gets a little discount. <laughs> yeah, well, probably a little discount, yeah. Um, and uh, so with the 320 acres you have, um, are you looking to expand anymore, or are you you're pretty good right now with, we, with the we are Mark, have? we are pretty good right now. Yeah. Uh, we, we have another 80 acres. 
out of that uh, 40 acres already planted mm -hmm. that's my son's project okay and he has another 35 acres uh, he was thinking next five years he may finish that project okay Un until something happens really drastically yeah and then we we still have like 2000 more acres if we wanted to expand okay uh, but it's not my project anyway so yeah, my, yeah. uh so folks um i'm having problems again with this app and i'm just gonna switch to the iphone app after i'm done with this interview um so uh vj we were talking i think we are at the point where we were talking about your son's project and um we were, i had asked you you're at 320 acres and are you looking to expand and you're you're pretty good so kind of we'll just kind of recap that real quick and then we'll and then we'll finish <laughs> yeah. mark uh, i'm glad to uh tell you my son is involved uh, mm -hmm. uh, with this uh, vineyard uh, since the last 10 years okay and he has uh, bought actually 80 acres just joining to our land mm -hmm. and he planted 40 acres started like three years ago and he will probably finish in the next five six years another 40 acres okay and he is uh, uh, totally involved in actually developing uh, ready vineyards uh, label wines mm -hmm. some of them are uh, uh, the French blends, yeah. some Italian blends, and Rhone, Rhone blends, yeah. and it's completely his project. And he's uh, probably he was asking me about hundred tons he's going to crush mm -hmm. uh, this year. Uh, we were uh, trying to save some of for him yeah. that many uh, grapes. Okay, and uh, uh, that's uh, his project. And uh, I think sometime this fall. Some of the wines may be released. All right, very uh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Mark, and, I, yeah, I would uh, like you, you so to much. come back. Yeah, and then maybe after that winery starts making uh, some wines uh, during the fall time. Yeah, uh, please visit us. Uh, harvest time would be awesome time. Yeah, and it's, uh, you can see the all the grapes and uh, how that this works in the South Plains. That'd be awesome. Uh, a lot of semi trucks come and then moving grapes from here right, to yeah. your country. Mm -hmm. uh, it's awesome, awesome place to visit. I look forward to doing that. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna end this here just because I just don't trust the app on the on the phone <laughs> at this point, okay. and I don't have it connected to my iPad, so I can't tell what's going on. Okay. Um, you know, VJ, thank you so much. Thank you very you much. Spending some time with me. Thank you for lunch. Oh yeah, you um, yeah. You know, your 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 name comes up your uh, all the time with uh, you know when when uh, wineries are sourcing their their grapes. Yeah. Um, you know, along with Neil, and uh, I love the fact that you spent some time with me. Yeah. Thank you so much. You bet. Yeah. All right. All right, folks. So that's going to do it for now. You can click the links above to friend me up. I'll have links below uh, for any information you need about this. Uh, and we'll see everyone again next time.